Hey, what's going on folks? I just wanted to show you a really cool application of the dot product, which I'm calling the dot product inequality. So in this case, we have three points that are graphed in a 2D world. Okay, the points are A, B, and M. A, B form a line, just like, I mean, any two points form a line, right? But I want you to imagine the line A, B, okay? What M, M is just kind of like a free point, a point that we might want to test. And what this inequality provides us with, zero is less than or equal to AB dot AM, less than or equal to AB dot itself, right? AB dot AB. What this provides us with is a really cool check to tell whether or not M is between the points A and B. So when I say um, between, here's what I mean. Let me take a little screenshot of this really quick. If you can imagine sort of one side of the world is B, okay, and one side of the world is A, this inequality just tells us whether or not M is between those two kind of bisections of the world, okay? So you'll see, I have it kind of a coding right now. This is a little simple example I made in Unity. Uh, here's what the code looks like, I'll show you. Uh, basically, I'm just grabbing references to each of the, the values in the scene. And then I'm simply printing AB.AM, AB.itself, and whether or not the equality that I showed you is valid. Well, if I move the point, and I, by the way, I totally recommend this. You should, you should totally just like jump into Unity or, some, or whatever you're comfortable with. And like, this is a really good way to gain an intuition of kind of how certain vector operations work. But you'll see that M, as soon as it gets higher than B, our equation is false. Okay, and if it goes under A, then the inequality no longer holds and we again have false. Okay, so if it's between them, it's true. If it's too high or too low, it's false. That is actually a really useful application. And before I jump into why it's useful, I just want to explain why that equation is true. Okay, just for some people, they may have a good understanding of it and it may be obvious, but... For other folks, it, it may be useful for me to kind of explain the different parts of this inequality. We can kind of think of this inequality as like, I mean, it's two different inequalities, literally. We're checking whether or not A, B, A, M is bigger than zero, right? Or if it's less than just A, B dot product with itself. And this is actually really easy to kind of understand if we put M on the line defined by A and B. Let me do that. Let me just copy... Uh, copy B's position and put it where M is currently. Okay. So right now M is right on top of B. And what that means is that B, the point B is literally like equal to M. They're the same exact point right now. And that means that the line segment AB is the same as the line segment AM. So the dot products you'll see here are the same value, right? It's equal to 90,000. But if I move it up, you'll see the value increases. And if I move it down, you'll see the value decreases. And the reason why is because the dot product of, uh, of two vectors is equal to the product of their vector magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them. So in this case, the angle between the vectors has not changed, right? that angle between AB and itself is zero. The, ve the angle between any two vectors that are literally the same vector is gonna be zero degrees. And so the cosine of zero is one, which means that factor cancels out. So all we need to worry about is the dot product being equal to the vector, vector magnitude product. So what that means is that AB dot AB is literally the product of the magnitude of both of, of this vector times itself, which is the same as saying the square of its length, basically. Um, and because the same angle is present for the vector AM, all we're doing here is changing the length. And so 
what this is basically measuring here, in this particular case where the angle is, this, is the same, is we're just checking out whether or not B, or basically whether or not M is farther from A than B, right? If it's too far, the magnitude of the vector AM is bigger than the vector magnitude AB. And so the value is bigger, and so this inequality doesn't hold. If it goes too small, then now it's not as big, and so the inequality is true. Okay, well, what about the other side? We talked about this inequality. What about this inequality, the one between 0 and the product of AB and AM? Well, in this case, we'll see that as M slowly approaches A, it does get smaller and smaller until it's right on top of A. And then in that case, it's zero. And then if we bring it lower, it actually becomes negative. Now, why would it be negative? That's because, like I was saying before, the dot product of two vectors is equal to the vector magnitude product times the cosine of the angle between them. And if two vectors are going in exactly opposite directions, then the angle between them is now no longer zero. Now it's exactly 180, right? 180 degrees completely the opposite direction. And the cosine of 180 is negative one. So basically now the magnitude is just gonna be negated. So if the magnitude of A and M was exactly equal to AB, so example, if I put it like right about here, then we should expect basically the same exact value, just negative, okay? So it's negative when it's too low and it's positive when it is in between the two and it's greater than this product when it is too high, basically, is one way to think about it. Okay, so that's, that's kind of why this inequality works, at least when they're collinear. Now let's talk about if I punch it off, right? What if it's not on the line AB? Well, for some strange reason, this inequality still works. Why is that? Why is that? Why does it not matter? You'll notice as I move M from side to side, the dot product of AB dot AM doesn't change at all, right? It was changing so much when we moved it up and down, right? It was negative sometimes, it was positive, sometimes it was a huge number. But when I move it left to right, it doesn't matter at all. Why is that? That's because this is essentially a projection, right? And so what we are looking at here is essentially projecting the point M onto the line defined by A and B. And so the way projections work is it doesn't matter how far it is in the direction orthogonal to the projection, because what the projection is gonna do is it's gonna snap it right onto the line, right? When you project a point onto a line, it's the same as snapping, right? I mean, this is totally colloquial, but it's the same as snapping that point onto a line. And so that's why it doesn't matter how far it is orthogonally. Okay, it only matters in its component that is in the direction of A and B. So if we were to think about this in terms of X and Y, right, we're going to, we're, things are going to get a lot complicated really, really quickly. But this is simple to think about if A and B is perfectly aligned to the Y axis, which it currently is, right? These two points have the same X value in the 2D, in the 2D world. They just have different y values. B is higher than A. It's above A, you might say, because it has a higher, it has a bit larger y value. Okay. So when I was saying it doesn't matter the horizontal amount, what I'm really saying is it doesn't matter how much it is in the direction of the vector that is orthogonal to A and B. And when I said all that matters is the y value, what I was really saying is that it only matters the basically the direction that it's moving in the direction that is represented by the component of the vector a b okay any vector can be broken down into two i mean any 2d vector can be broken down into two components as long as those two components are basis vectors right two basis vectors define a 2d space they can be used to combine, they can be combined to create any point in 2D space, right? You only need to, as long as they're not collinear, bam, you've got a basis, okay? Well, what that means is that this principle will hold even if we rotate the points, 
So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna rotate our points here. Okay, so this is gonna get a little freaky, but check it out, the principle still holds. M is between A and B currently, and though it may be a little harder to see, as soon as it goes lower than A and B, you'll see that it becomes false, right? And now it becomes false, right? So now, let me just draw this. Remember previously, we were kind of seeing if it's inside the middle of this kind of center region, this little river here. Well, now that center region, what is happening here? Sorry, the snip tool is like super laggy. So now we've got two lines going like this. So now we're checking out whether or not it's in this region. Okay. So again, it's kind of that, if I, I mean, I can't really move it perfectly. Um, yeah, for some reason I can only move it literally up and down. But right here, you can see that it's kind of projecting onto this area and that as soon as it gets to false, that's because the projection onto the line AB does not fall within the AB range. Okay, so that's that's kind of how this system works, uh, this little dot product inequality. I think it's pretty cool. And the reason why I brought this up is actually in, in the book that I'm currently writing. We are trying to figure out whether or not a point is in a rectangle. And this neat little math trick is, is one of the fastest ways to do that. And the reason why is because if we do have a rectangle, here I, all right, don't get scared here, but I've almost doubled the number of points here, right? Now we've got points A, B, C, and D, which define a rectangle. Well, all we need to do, this is really neat, in order to check if M is inside of the rectangle, is check whether or not M is between A and B, and if M is between B and C. Can you imagine why that is? Let me, uh, I'll draw it just in case that's a little bit hard to imagine. Um, if M is between A and B, right, then that means it is inside this region, okay? And if M is between B and C, then that means it's inside this region, okay? And you can see these two uh, regions overlap. And where do they overlap? They overlap right where the rectangle is defined. Okay, so for some reason we're lagging out. Oh my gosh, this tool is terrible. All right, but basically that's why M is inside the rectangle. And we only have to uh, check those two sides. Now, normally, we would have to check uh, for basically all of the sides. We'd have to check every single edge for a polygon. But because... Uh, a rectangle is symmet symmetric, right? All of its internal angles are literally right angles. Uh, that means that it's the same. Checking whether or not M is between C and D is the same as checking if M is between A and D. And so for that reason, we actually only need to check two sides, this side and this side, right? Any two sides, as long as they're adjacent, uh, that's going to allow us to check whether or not M is inside the rectangle. Um, so that is a really important principle, and again, it has to do with projection, right? Essentially, what we're doing is we're projecting M onto AB, and this principle is actually going to be expanded upon when we start thinking about whether or not M is in a polyhedron. So I said polyhedron, not polygon. A polyhedron is a, a 3D shape. Right? It's not a 2D shape anymore. It's a 3D shape. It has volume. And instead of projecting whether or not M is on the correct side of all the angles, or sorry, the correct side of all the edges, which was the case of the polygons, for polyhedrons, we're going to check whether or not M is on the correct side of all of the faces. Okay? And that would be correct, right? So... Oh gosh, I don't know if I could draw it right now. I probably can't. But um but I'm going to I'm going to we're really taking a stretch here with my drawing skills cuz I definitely can't draw this, but if you can imagine a square, okay? Oh gosh, I don't know how to draw a square. Something Oh boy. That doesn't look like Oh shit. All right, hold on. Let's pause the video. All right, check it out. I drew a perfect rectangular prism. Oh, oh, hold on. Don't look at that. 
Oh, no, no, you can't look at this either. Hold on. All right. Uh, yep, don't look at that. Okay, so I drew this perfect rectangular prism. And if I wanted to check whether or not a point is inside this rectangular prism, right, that's kind of imagining whether or not this point is on the correct side of each one of these planes, right? We can imagine this top plane kind of extending to infinity, right? And then we just want to make sure it's on sort of this side of the plane. If it's above the plane up here, then it's not inside the rectangle. Rectangular prism, I should say, excuse me. Um, and it's kind of, you're doing that for this plane, and then you do it for this plane, right? You do this plane, and you're checking whether or not it's on this side or this side of that plane. And that is kind of the same principle applied in 3D. And that's how we're going to check whether or not a point is in a polyhedron. Uh, but that's for another lesson. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, if you haven't checked out my book already, you can check it out at mrventures.net. And then you just click on the top right here. And we're currently talking about uh, math uh, vectors. That's what we're talking about. This is vectors we're chatting about. So that is that. Uh, thanks for watching.